travels around the earth in cycles again and again and again. So I told you that water usually hangs around on earth in its liquid form. That's what we call water, right? But sometimes when things get really hot, not just here, but in rivers, lakes, streams, and ponds. So these drops of water start rising up and they become an invisible gas called water vapor. This process has a name, it's called evaporation. Wow! So I told you what happens when liquid water becomes very, very hot. So what do you think happens when water vapor becomes really, really cold? Does it turn back into water? Yes, as the air gets colder and colder, because as we rise up, the air starts getting cooler and cooler. As you can see, water vapor starts turning back into liquid droplets. And this is called condensation. Ooh, are these water droplets on your hands? Interesting. And when these tiny drops of water start sticking together or condensing onto each other, or when these water drops touch other dust particles or condense onto them, they form something really beautiful. They form... Clouds! So that's where clouds come from. Stuck together. Oops! Condensed water droplets. Yes. And as more and more and more of these water droplets start coming together, cloud starts getting heavier and heavier and heavier and then it cannot hold that water anymore. So what happens is that that water starts coming down as rain. We call this precipitation. Ooh, why is that cloud so dark? You know, as the water starts collecting in the cloud, the cloud starts becoming heavier and heavier and heavier, right? And it's filled with water. So what happens is that, that water blocks the sunlight from passing through. So if you look at it from below, a rain cloud will appear dark because lesser light is passing through it. Look, a rainbow. Yes. Do you know that rainbows are created by the magic of raindrops? So what raindrops do is that when light hits it, they break up light into the beautiful colours that you see on a rainbow. Oh, that is so colourful. I didn't know that a raindrop had so much magic. Come, let's go faster. I want to see what lies at the other end of the rainbow. Dora, I hate to tell you this, but there is no other end to the rainbow. It's more of an optical illusion. So, when you move, it appears as if the rainbow is also moving with you. It's getting colder. Look, it's snowing. In extremely cold conditions like this, the raindrops freeze into tiny snow particles. So instead of raining, it actually starts snowing. It's so pretty. Yes, and do you know that each snowflake is very unique in design? And they're very slow. So they can take up to 45 minutes to reach the ground. If you like this video and if you want to watch more videos like these, hit like and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy learning this way, download Byju's, the all new and personalized learning app.
on a dreary summer day in the vastness of the desert, we come across the story of Durana the Traveler. She's looking for an oasis amidst this endless canvas of sand. She has traveled miles to find the greatest treasure of the desert. The entire life of the desert, however small it is, is dependent on this magical treasure. But this treasure is disappearing. Without it, there can be no plants. Without plants, no food. And without food, there can be no animals. In fact, this treasure dwells in all humans, making about 70% of them. Without it, we cannot survive. The important treasure that Durana has finally found is what makes an oasis possible in such dry lands. This treasure is called water. Wow, I didn't know water was that important. Yes, water is one of the most important resources. Without water, plants and animals cannot survive. Not just plants and animals. Even you and I need water for our daily activities. Like, let me show you like this, and that, and this, and that, and this, and even that. You know, I've always wondered about what happens below the surface of water. It's, it's like a different world. But how about you and I do it without getting wet today? How about we do it in style? Let's go in a submarine. Let's go! Oh, look, a dolphin and fishes, so many of them. Yes, the ocean is home to so many beautiful creatures. In fact, a lot of these creatures don't even come out to land. They always live in the water. Hey, what's that? That is a jellyfish. They look so icky. Well, icky they may be. But do you know that jellyfish go is used for medical research? It's actually powering up the electrical devices of the future. And jellyfishes are very, very interesting creatures. You should get to know them better. The sea is actually full of surprises and it's home to so many types of creatures like planktons and fishes and corals. The list is endless. The most surprising thing is that we are yet to explore the world of the ocean. We have seen just one tenth of the life forms that are there today. In fact, we don't even know most of the life forms that exist in the ocean. Of the living part of the earth is beneath the oceans and is yet to be explored. Scientists estimate that around 8 million species exist on Earth and only 15% of them have been discovered. Millions of life forms are yet to be discovered in the oceans. What? Really? Fishes, jellyfishes, corals, what more could be there? A lot, lot, lot more. There are so many hidden treasures in the ocean. As time may come, we human beings may explore a lot, lot, lot more of these treasures. Look how bright the moon is tonight. Do you think there is life on the moon? The moon is beautiful, but it's very plain and dusty. So no, there is no life on the moon. Forget about the moon. There is no life on other planets as well because they do not have the variety and colors that Earth has. Do you know why there is no life on planets other than the Earth? because there is no water. For a long, long time, we human beings have been trying to find out if there are other planets out there which can support life on it. And every time when we've tried to search if we are alone in this universe, we've started by looking out if water was there on the other planets, because water is essential for life to be present on any planet, any surface, anywhere. If you like this video and want to watch many, many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel.
Sappy paper is manufactured from wood grown in sustainably managed forests and plantations. The timber used for paper production comes either from deciduous trees, such as birch, poplar, beech and eucalyptus, or conifer trees like spruce, fir and pine. Conifer wood has longer fibers than deciduous species and generally forms stronger papers. When the logs arrive at the woodyard, they are fed into a rotating drum which removes the bark. The logs are then chipped. The largest source of wood chips for paper making is the recycled offcuts from industrial sawmills. The wood chips are transported to the pulp mill on a conveyor belt. As they enter the pulp mill, the wood chips are fed into a digester where they are cooked in an acid solution to dissolve the lignin and separate the plant fibers. We call the pulp obtained from this process wood-free because the lignin has been dissolved. The fibers are washed to remove the acid solution and the pulp is now soft and fibrous. Before it can be used to make white paper, the pulp is bleached and any residual lignin, which would cause the paper to yellow with age, is filtered out. To protect the environment, this bleaching is chlorine-free, using oxygen and peroxide. The yellow-brown wood chips that entered the pulp mill have now been turned into a soft white pulp, the principal raw ingredient for making paper. This treated pulp can be dried, baled, and transported to other paper mills, which may either not have their own pulp mill, or may require a specific type of pulp to give the paper particular characteristics. Whether produced on site or bought on the market, the pulp enters the paper mill and is mixed with water. The pulp solution is refined by passing it through a series of rotating and stationary blades. These give the fibers a variable degree of clean cut or fibrillated ends. Fibrillated fibers bind more tightly with adjacent fibers, creating stronger paper. Wood fibers alone would produce rough textured and unevenly dense paper and fillers such as calcium carbonate and clay are mixed in to make the paper more opaque and give it a more control density. Dyes, optical brighteners and sizes may also be blended into the pulp to improve the appearance of the paper. By far the most important process material is water. About a hundred liters of fresh water are needed to make one kilogram of paper. Sophisticated wastewater treatment plants and closed water circulation systems on the paper line allow over 90% of this water to be recycled. The pulp solution is now a carefully controlled mix of fibers, fillers and coloring agents suspended in water, ready to enter the paper machine. The paper machine is the heart of the paper mill. A continuously running series of manufacturing processes that will convert the pulp solution into the perfect paper grade for each market application. The head box is located at the beginning of the paper machine. Here the pulp solution is injected at high pressure directly into the space between two continuously rotating wires. These carry the pulp into the gap former, which rapidly drains the excess water from both sides. This immobilizes the pulp within milliseconds of leaving the head box. 
turning it into a continuous web of paper, still wet and fragile, but already exhibiting its most important sheet properties. The delicate paper web is now carried into the press section by continuously looped wet felts, which carry away most of the water and stop the sheet from tearing. At the shoe press, the paper web is forced between a soft rotating roller pressing against a hydraulically actuated metal pad. Water is squeezed out of the paper by this pressure and this is absorbed and carried away by the wet felts. The longer section of the paper machine contains the drying cylinders. These huge heated rollers dry the paper, giving it the strength to become self-supporting, ready for the processes which will determine its surface qualities. The paper sheet passes along the paper making machine at up to 1,400 meters per minute. Every process is continuously monitored to ensure its manufacturing consistency. The paper passes through a machine calendar, where two finely polished steel cylinders at a precisely determined width apart ensure that the paper thickness is consistently even. The paper then passes through a series of sizing and coating presses. Here, starch and coating colors are applied to its surface using a film press process. The coating color is sprayed onto an elastic roll which then transfers the coating film to the paper web. Film press coating creates a uniformly thick coating layer which follows the surface of the paper. After each coating process, the surface is dried by infrared heating panels and drying cylinders. Setting the surface with sizing encourages printing inks to dry on the surface of the paper rather than be absorbed into the paper, increasing the color intensity of the finished print and improving the surface strength and water resistance of the paper. The paper is then wound onto a series of steel cores which press against a pope reel. This makes sure that the paper is wound at the right tension onto each core. Every hour, the paper line creates a jumbo reel containing 80 kilometers of paper sheet, 8.5 meters in width, and weighing 120 tons. The paper machine operators carefully check every aspect of the base paper quality, its thickness, opacity and smoothness, making sure these are exactly as specified before allowing the robot truck to carry the jumbo reel away for further treatment and finishing processes. The final surface qualities of each batch of paper are controlled in the coating and finishing lines. For example, the paper from this jumbo reel may be sold with a gloss or matte finish, natural or bright white in color. The coating compounds are mixed according to precise recipes in tanks in the coating kitchen. The main color pigment is calcium carbonate, which makes the paper surface white. The coating solution may also include clay and talcum powder. Binders can be natural starches or purely synthetic compounds such as latex. To create a smoother surface, up to two more coatings per side are applied using the blade coating process. Excess solution is sprayed directly onto the paper and is then scraped off by a steel blade. Depending on the pressure of the doctor blade, a uniform paper surface is created as the irregularities in the paper are smoothed out. 
Each side is coated and dried in sequence to create the correct characteristics for each paper grade. The paper now has the correct base characteristics and the optimum coating consistency, but it does not yet have a perfect surface finish. This is achieved in the Super Calendar. The paper passes through up to 10 rollers, which each apply pressure and temperature. These rolls have different surfaces, such as hard steel and soft rubber, depending on the type of gloss and surface treatment required. As it is wound back onto another steel core for transport, the paper in this jumbo reel now has all the characteristics needed for its end use. Apart from one final detail, its size. The jumbo reels are transported to a slitter winder. Rotary blades cut the reel into several narrow reels, which are rewound and sent forward to the finishing department. Several reels are simultaneously fed into a sheeter, which cuts the paper into sheets and stacks these onto pallets. Several printing processes, like heat set web offset, cut star, and label presses, use paper in real form. These reels remain uncut and are moved forward on automated conveyor belts. Whether the paper has been cut into sheets for a sheet press or remains in a roll for a web offset press, the final destination is the same, the packing lines and warehouse. Each reel of paper is wrapped in craft cardboard to avoid damage in transport. Each pallet load of sheets is either shrink-wrapped or wrapped in reams, ready for delivery to the customer. Every consignment of both sheets and reels is labelled with the brand name, a batch number to identify its exact manufacturing history and its destination. All that remains is to ship the paper, now a branded, quality-controlled product with precise characteristics and performance, out to the customer.